Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya In such a beautiful setting, this may be a new Vyasa Sun, is it? How long has this Vyasa Sun been here? Long time? I think it's one of the most beautiful Vyasa Suns in, in the world. I was thinking and seeing Srila Prabhupada sitting there. What must have been Srila Prabhupada's thought when he first planned to come to the West? We get some indication from the prayers that he wrote while crossing the ocean and entering into the harbor at Boston. Prabhupada's prayer is a very humble prayer. Um, he says, personally, I have no qualification. And this is certainly in Vaishnava mood. The disciple feels, personally, I have no qualification. But he says, my Guru Maharaj has a strong desire to see Krishna consciousness spread. He said, I don't know how these people who are addicted to so many sinful habits will one day be able to practice. He said, but somehow, Krishna, you are in the heart of everyone. So please make me dance. And he says, make me dance, make me dance. It reminds me also of when Srila Prabhupada sent, or brought rather, the deities of Radha Gopinath in Sydney, Australia, and installed them. Srila Prabhupada later on said that as he was leaving the temple in Sydney, he said that, I know that the devotees here are not qualified to worship you, but you are in their heart as a super soul. So, please instruct them and make them qualified. So, <clears throat> this is our thought as well. That we are insufficient. I had a meeting recently with one of my God brothers. For the last few years I've been engaged in studies so I have not had much free time. And Texas is a little bit like New Zealand. It's out of the way. I don't know how many people you get through here. It's not exactly on a beaten path, is it? I mean, you really have to want to come here. So, sister, how she's always pulling things. Is she going to do that again? She's quite good at it, isn't she? So, I don't get the opportunity as much as I used to because of my studies to meet uh, my advanced uh, God brothers. So, we hosted the North American GBC meeting. And uh, among my God brothers, I couldn't be with, I could be with all of them in the meeting, but the meeting is not really a place for the Dati Pratigri Dati Guyam Akyati Prichati. To speak confidentially, there has to be some privacy. So 
So I decided to choose two of them who I felt would be able to help me the most. And I was not disappointed. Um, I had wonderful meetings with these two God brothers. One was Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, the other was Rabindra Sri Prabhu. Not that I couldn't have met with the others who were there, but I only had a limited time, and somehow I felt there was a reason why I selected these two. Because my service now brings me into contact with the material world. And generally a sannyasi has no contact with the material world. In fact, sometimes people wonder, what is a sannyasi doing going to a university? Here's our friend, he's doing a PhD. You know the university is a very worldly place. And you're in a very safe subject. You're doing math. I had a math requirement to fulfill in my <coughs> courses. But somehow Krishna arranged that everything I did was specially designed. So I took philosophy of math. <coughs> Mathematics is safe. Philosophy of math is not safe. <laughs> philosophy of anything is not safe. Philosophy is not safe. It meddles with very high subjects. So going into the university, and I'm not just studying languages. Languages are safe because you're just conjugating verbs. You know, you're, you're looking at the case endings of nouns. You're looking at grammar. I'm dealing with the world of thought. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has advised, don't read many books. It means don't read others' books. But in the university, I have no time except to read others' books. So someone may ask, why are you doing this? Well, Jiva Goswami went to Benares and he studied Mayavad philosophy. Now what business does Jiva Goswami have to disregard the instruction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who said that anyone who hears the commentary of Shankara is doomed. But if Jiva Goswami had not read and studied the commentary of the Mayavadis, we would not be protected as we now are. So I think that Krishna is doing something with me, because ordinarily a sannyasi has no business to go into the world. But I'm going into the world. Of course, dressed like this with my tilak, even stronger now the tilak is right, it's not, you can't see my tilak, but I know that you are all Vaishnavas, so you see the tilak even if it's not there <laughs> but when I go in the world I put very fresh tilak I don't do what I did tonight I always make sure that everyone knows that this is a Hare Krishna and so when I wanted to think uh, of whom to when I wanted to think of who to talk to I thought of choosing two God brothers who have more contact with the world Bhakti Tirtha Swami he does a lot of preaching to uh, alternative types of spiritual groups and Ravindra Sri Prabhu himself is a PhD. He knows the ropes of that world. From Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, I got this very good piece of advice. But here's what he said to me. When I talked with them, I had a different word for each one. Anyway, this is what he said to me. He said, the task that we have before us is very, very, very great. It is far beyond our ability. 
He was speaking of himself personally about being a guru, and being a leader of the Krishna consciousness movement. He said, and I said to him, I reminded him of what I said here, that Prabhupada had said, that the Krishna consciousness movement should go down in history for having saved the world. Prabhupada said that he wanted that the Krishna consciousness movement would be written down in history as having saved the world. That is a huge task. So Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj said, we are not up to this task. We are not big enough for this work. We are not strong enough for this work. But, there's a big but, he said, the job has to be done. So Krishna is going to have to send us the mercy to empower us to fulfill this task. Now, I like this point he made very much. It seems to have two parts to it. The first part is very humble. We are not up to this task. We just are not strong enough, not powerful enough to do it. And the second part is one of confidence that although we are very, very insignificant, the mercy of Krishna is all-embracing, all-powerful, and nothing is impossible when one is empowered with Krishna's mercy. And we are sure to get that mercy if we're willing to take up the man, the task, or the mission. So I like these two points that work together. And I think that they, on the one hand, keep you humble so that you don't become proud. Because we know the saying, pride <laughs> cometh before the fall. Right? Pride comes before falling. Every one of us, at some time or another, becomes proud. Prabhupada quotes this common saying, even a pauper, even a poor man, is proud of his penny. Right? So, you know, pride is very hard not to, it's very hard not to be victimized at some point. So this mood of, we are very, we have to admit this before Krishna. We have to admit this to ourselves. I'm even saying this in front of all of you, some of whom are my disciples. We are very insignificant. I am very insignificant. But the task is not insignificant. The mission, the order of our founder, Prabhupada, is huge and powerful. And it has to be fulfilled. And nothing is impossible. Do you realize what Prabhupada tried to do? But do you think about this for a moment? At 70 years of age, what, what was he... Do you realize what he was thinking? He was thinking at 70 years of age, to go on a boat and his health was frail. He suffered two heart attacks on that boat. When someone gets a heart attack, they stop working for a month or two months. They get a triple bypass. Is it? Man, I mean, it's just like, you know, you talk to people who've had a heart Has anyone here had a heart attack? How long ago? Huh? 96. 96. It's, you're never the same after that, right? Huh? I mean, it's quite shocking, isn't it? And it's hard to be the same person after that, right? Prabhupada had two heart attacks on the boat. No doctor there. Did you get a doctor's help? Did you have some relatives help you? Some friends help you? Huh? Were you on a boat? 
I mean, try to let. Were you on a boat? No. You realize Prabhupada was on a boat? No relatives, no friends, nobody, just Krishna. You look at Prabhupada's diary. Have any of you got that Jaladutta diary book? Published by the BBT. Very nice book to get. Book. And the BBT put out this book, Prabhupada's own handwriting. Beautiful book. And Prabhupada, through all the days of the heart attack, on each of the days, instead of any entry, there's just a line. So all he can do is write a line. He's just had a massive heart attack. Not maybe massive heart attack, but he had some heart attack. <coughs> And then he has this dream in which Krishna and all the incarnations of Krishna are in the boat. And they're all rowing the boat. The boat that he's on, the Jaladuta, or the boat of his life. And Krishna's telling him, don't worry, you'll be all right. And all the incarnations of God are coming to him and saying, we're behind you, we empower you. What a task. The whole, you know, Vedic culture, Vedic heritage, Vaishnava tradition, Vaishnava teachings are all locked up in India. And Prabhupada is determined to break them open. Just to break open, like the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Chaitanya Chaitanya, the Panchatattva danced and chanted, and the more they danced and chanted, they broke open the storehouse of love of God. Prabhupada was determined to break open the storehouse of Krishna consciousness and flood the world with it. At 70 years of age, without any financial backer, without any help from anybody in his own mission. He wrote so many letters, got no help. It's amazing now how people come and say, you know, <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? How, you know, we knew, you know, we, <laughs> it's just amazing. How so many people from the Gaudiya Math now, whoever comes from the Gaudiya Math, they always try to claim close relationship with Prabhupada. But where were they? When Prabhupada needed their help, you know, sometimes they'd send some para, some burfi, or some cartel. I mean, they needed some help. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're out there and all by yourself, and someone sends you para, it's okay, you know. <laughs> you can write a letter back saying thank you, but let's realize he needed something very different than para. Well, Prabhupada said, Krishna sent all of you to me. He often said that you were all part, he said, that you, he said you were part of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement, and my Gumar sent all of you to assist me, because none of his own people from his own mission would come. He had to start his own mission. I remember a letter, I was sitting with Prabhupada, it was 1969, and I had just rented him this house, beautiful house, really good house, the best house, he, best quarters he had had up to that time. It was about June of 1969, maybe around June. <coughs> and the first, I remember showing him the room, and we had, you know, on the Nectar of Devotion cover, there's a picture of Radha and Krishna in a swing. So that painting, it's a large painting, it's just been done by a, a lady, a little bit like Madri. Very nice lady. Her name was Deva Huti. And she had painted, her daughter was a disciple, was a devotee, also a Prabhupada, whose name was Indu, maybe Indu Mati. Something like that. So, anyway, this painting, we had it covered. I had a cloth on it, and I brought Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I took Prabhupada through the rooms, and then I showed him his sitting room, I had a big um, sliding door onto a garden, and each time he would, you know, his eyes would go wide, and 
then finally, you know, he looked at the wall, and this was a big thing with a cloth on it. And I said, Srila Prabhupada, there's another surprise here. And he said, everything from you is a surprise, therefore there's no surprise. <laughs> There was that beautiful painting, and Prophet liked it so much, he made it the cover of Nectar Devotion. Anyway, that was just the frame for the, the, frame for the story. The, the story is that I wanted to say, Prophet got a letter from his godbrothers in India, his Godiamat godbrothers, that uh, you will have formed your own society, and that's not very good, because we already have our Godiam mission. And we are hereby uh, calling you back to have a meeting with us so that we can have a proper governing body and you can work properly within the jurisdiction of our society. Please let us know if you are prepared to come. So I was the in charge of the temple in Los Angeles at the time. So Prabhupada showed me the letter. And... Uh, Finally, he said, okay, we will reply this letter. So he sent them the reply. They wanted to have, he said that our, uh, they wanted a 12 man managing the governing body. So Prabhupada said that I am preaching all over the world and you are preaching in India. At that time, we had not yet gone to India. He said, therefore, I am prepared to be a part of your governing body, providing that since I am preaching in 11 twelfths of the world, 11 of the 12 members are from my institution. <laughs> then I agree to be part of your governing body. Of course, we never got a reply to <laughs> So where is all this help? People, everyone wants to affiliate themselves with Srila Prabhupada. But when he needed help, the only people who helped him were all of us. Nobody else helped him. Sometimes people publish books with letters they got from Prabhupada. They get 10, 15 letters. I got 200 letters from Prabhupada. If people want to match the numbers of letters to show how intimate they were, then I have my 200 letters. And I still have the 200 letters. So people should understand that the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. What should we do, Colin? Keep talking? Okay. I pray that the deities forgive us for not doing a big RT and kirtan. If we keep talking about Prabhupada, we'll be protected <laughs> from any offense. Ah, Shama Pandora. She's doing it again. <coughs> Very naughty sister. <laughs> she likes that wire. She's wired. <laughs> so, um, the likelihood of Prabhupada succeeding as he did was only possible because look at the humble mood Prabhupada had. It's incredible when you read the letters. It was incredible when you meet Prabhupada. When you met Prabhupada, how humble his mood was. So I like this point of my god brother, Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, because it gave me some idea. After all, I find myself now, I'm going to be going to uh, <clears throat> to Cambridge, which is, you know, like such a big name, right? Cambridge University. And as a sannyasi. And I have to study all these philosophies. And <coughs> I think that unless it's like a past, and people will say, why are you going there? Well, I'm going there for Krishna's business. I'm not exactly sure 
what will happen as a result of going there. The governing body of our movement has asked me to establish a university in Mayapur. So that may be why I'm going there. But as Prabhupada could not predict each and everything that Krishna would arrange, I also cannot predict what Krishna has in store. So I'm going to remember Bhakti Tirtha's words. Now, Ravindra Sarup and I had a very amazing talk. I have to say that at one point, as we were finally concluding the talk and driving to the temple, I turned to him and I said that since the time of Srila Prabhupada, I cannot remember any more significant conversation that I've ever had. And I can't remember when I felt closer to Prabhupada since his physical departure than in this discussion with you. It was a remarkable discussion. We had a very interesting talk about, first of all, beginning with <coughs> what is the goal of Krishna consciousness and how to achieve that goal. How to achieve love of God. That was a discussion. Pretty important subject, isn't it? How to achieve the love of God. This is what we talked about. And I'm not going to give you all the details of the discussion, but we discussed this topic of how to achieve the highest state of Krishna consciousness. And I gave my I gave a lecture to Sukha, some of you saw it on the video. He touched on some of those topics. <clears throat> the esoteric and exoteric nature of spiritual life. In the past few years, there have been translations of many literatures of the Goswamis. I'm sure you've seen them. There's been a proliferation of them books by Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami. Some of you are going to this. <coughs> Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And being an avid reader, I read them. These great acharyas give intimate details about how you can achieve love for Krishna. Now, here is Radha and Krishna. This is a very intimate ceremony. The Pujari is offering the Gila. The Goswamis talk about this type of offering of the Gila. They use imagery that their eyes should be full of love and offering an arati to the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. When they see the Jamuna River and the waves of the Jamuna River, they talk about the Jamuna River offering lotuses, her lotus flowers, unto the feet of Krishna. In your gopi's song called the Gopi Geet, the gopis say that the Jamuna is so fortunate because whereas we, gopis who are married, cannot openly offer lotus flowers at Krishna's feet, you, Jamuna, can do so. <clears throat> so, how will we come into the connection of Ram and Krishna? How will we come into their association? How will we become an intimate associate? Bhaktivinoda Thakur 
on behalf of the Acharyas has spelled it out A, B, C, D, everything. The book he wrote, Jaiva Dharma, the Dharma of the Jiva, eternal Dharma, Jaiva Dharma. Uh, what is that Dharma? He builds up and up. And he says that eventually you have to approach a guru and inquire from that guru. And the guru will ask you. Bhakti Thakur is treating this book as if it is many lifetimes. He collapses into one lifetime so that we can get the gist. And the guru says, what is the mood that you want to serve Krishna? And one person answers as a friend of Krishna. The other one answers as a lover of Krishna. And then they each get further instruction. Your name is like this in Krishna's Leela. And your age is like this. And your associates are so and so. All these details. So suddenly we get these translations of these books, we read all these things, and we think so many things. And we think, well, here it is. And then we wonder, <coughs> why didn't Prabhupada tell us these things? And then someone says, well, you weren't ready to hear it. But I'll tell you now. So, Ravindra Srupa Prabhu and I had a very nice and interesting discussion. <coughs> Whether or not it was because we weren't ready that Prabhupada didn't say it. But as it turns out, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati also didn't say it. He also didn't tell it the way Bhakti Thakur did. In fact, at Vrindavan, in Radhakund, there are so many Babajis, and they all are very critical of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And they say that he never got it. He didn't get the mantra, the Siddha Pranali mantra. And therefore, he cannot give it to his followers. And they condemn the whole line <coughs> because of this. Now, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had a different version. He said that the Siddha Pranali mantra, Siddha Pranali means the mantra by which you achieve perfection. He said that the Siddha Pranali mantra is. Trinada pi sinichena, tarora pi sihishnuna, amanena manandena, kirtaniya sutta hari. Be more humble than a blade of grass, be more tolerant than a tree, give all respect to others, but don't require any respect for yourself, and this way constantly chant the Hare Krishna mantra. When Srila Prabhupada was asked by Bhakti Chiru Maharaj, Prabhupada, how are we going to be able to know our eternal identity? Prabhupada said, when, when you are ready, then the spiritual master will personally introduce you to Krishna. He said, I will come and tell you everything. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and his foremost disciple, Srila Prabhupada, both decided that the nature of the Kali Yuga was so contaminating that the method of getting perfection had to be uh, adjusted, if you want to say it, or at least covered or concealed and made internal. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati never said what his identity in Krishna's pastimes was. 
Śrīla Prabhupāda never said what his identity in Krishna's pastimes was. Bhakti Nautākura did. And all the Babajis say that unless your guru identifies himself as the eternal associate and says who they are, then you cannot practice the proper rag sadhana. Because you have to meditate on your guru in their liberated form. Prabhupada never said like that. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati didn't say that. They stressed something very different. They emphasized the mission of spreading Krishna consciousness. What is the essence of the gopis moved towards Krishna? In the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, it is said the gopis are the best of all Krishna's devotees. And their special quality is that they do not have any personal, separate, interest other than Krishna's. The essence of the gopis is not particularly, first of all, the essence is we can concentrate on the fact that they are feminine, that they have a type of conjugal love, but the essence of that love is that more than anyone else, they are selfless. So the qualification to follow the gopis is somehow to become selfless. Now which process will make you more selfless in your service? To start to imagine who, what your eternal identity is and to figure out what your spiritual master's eternal identity is and to start to think of sadhana and service in this way. Do you think that that will draw from you the maximum amount of selfless service? Or will it very easily degrade itself into a selfish desire? Those who become degraded into a selfish desire, what are they called? Sahajis. Is it possible? There are two things that Prabhupada emphasizes as the most dangerous thing, and he repeatedly says it throughout our books. What are those two things? Sahajya and Mayavad. Why? What reason could he be telling everybody about Sahajis? Where are there Sahajis? Well, there was, there was a Sahaji woman here a long time ago, wasn't there? Right? Many years ago when there was a whole group of Sahajis here, 25 years ago in Prabhupada's time. But it's because this thing will come within our movement. And Prabhupada knew that. It must come. Because it always comes in our mind. These are the two things that contaminate the mind. This is what contaminated Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mind. The whole lineage became contaminated by Sahajism. That's why they list how many? 13 or 14 types of Sahajis and Pradayas in Navadweep. All, all. The whole Karta Bhajya, all of these Gauranga Nagari. Sahodra Swami has delineated it very nicely about this. So, it is always a danger. So, what will bring us into the mood of selfless service? What will draw out of us the maximum mood of selfless service, which qualifies us? for following the footsteps of the Bhagavad the Sankirtan movement, preaching. So many different activities, constantly, so that there's never a free moment. Just like today, where is there an opportunity for Maya to come in my life? I mean, look at what I, I'm sick, i got no business sitting here talking to you. I should be in, in Mandri's house, sipping ginger tea. <laughs> but here I am. What would bring, you know, there wasn't a moment for Maya to find any room to enter. She couldn't get her foot in the door. And on the other hand, if I had been all day long meditating on my eternal identity and my guru's eternal identity, which is easier and which is more effective? and which attracts the attention of Krishna more. Prabhupada personally said, who told oh, Ani Ruta, driving to the airport yesterday, he told me, 
<clears throat> that he heard this lecture in which Prabhupada makes the point that nothing will more give, endear you to Krishna, no meditation or anything, than being absorbed constantly in the preaching mission. Because this draws out every ounce of our energy. That's why Prabhupada pushed so strongly the Sankirtan mission. That's why Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati pushed it so strongly. And they they covered the esoteric nature. They collapsed, they integrated, they you can say they made the esoteric understanding come through this mission. The word automatic. Prabhupada said it will automatically come without any fear of sahajya tarnish. So this is this is what Ravindra Sri Prabhu and I began to discuss. And then we got into a more personal discussion in the sense of my my work. He gave me so much confidence for the work that I had to do. He made it clear to me that Prabhupada and Krishna are going to allow you to do your dissertation and in such a wonderful way that you will be able to bring out and Prabhupada and make Prabhupada available to the intelligence and the scholarly community. And I really do feel that my going to Cambridge and going as Prabhupada's secretary, if someone says, who are you? I am Prabhupada's secretary. And I simply want to introduce you to Prabhupada to the world. Now the book distributors are doing that. The Prashana distribution distributors are doing that. The Harinam distributors are doing that. But, you know, let's be honest. There's... There, those intellectuals are avoiding. Just like when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was preaching, right? It says that somehow those, what does it say in the Chaitanya Bhagavad, those intellectuals were avoiding and not the leap. So it's that same group they are avoiding, Prabhupada. And we have to introduce Sri Prabhupada to them. Why am I doing this? Did Krishna tell me to do this? Krishna arranged it. I never had any idea I would be doing this. I'm just a Sankirtan leader. I like to push the Sankirtan movement. You know, I was in Vrindavan doing Vrindavan Bhajan. Before that, I was leading the Radha party. I'm a Sankirtan leader. But somehow, Krishna said, no, you're going to do this. And so, he's pushing me forward. And his success is coming. And I have to, I have taken constantly, I ask all the Vaishnavas, and they all say, do this. It's very good, do it. So, this was the two discussion topics that I had with two God brothers. And I got tremendous strength from <coughs> hearing from both of them. I tell you this to show you that here I am an ISKCON guru and leader, the guru of many of you. But I also have, I also practice Guru Yamakyati Prishati. Understand? It's not that the, oh, once you become a guru, you don't have to ever inquire from anyone. You understand? We didn't have the fortune to see Srila Prabhupada interact with his God brothers very much. I saw some of it, but there was very little because none of them would join his movement and help him. But you have the advantage that you have gurus who have God brothers and God sisters and a whole family of associates. So I'm telling you this so that you will understand yourselves the value of associating with each other. When I associate with my God brothers, I don't just talk some light topics. I catch hold of them and talk on very deep subjects, the deepest subjects, which concern not only my future, but the future of my disciples, because I feel very responsible. 
So we can get strength, we can get help from each other. We have to realize the value of associating together in the right way, not in the wrong way. And, you know, we have experienced these days of how wrong association is so available. As I said this evening, this is not only the age of information, the information age, it's the misinformation age. It's the disinformation age. It's an age in which, with one push of a button, you can misinform <coughs> thousands of people. <clears throat> now you can buy a computer for a thousand, two thousand dollars. You can go surfing, right? Nobody, you know, the day has come where people are going to stop body surfing and they go, you know, mind surfing over the internet and they're just, you know, going catching a wave here. <coughs> You know, and because they're not very expert, they often get crunched on the beach. They get dashed out on the rocks by a heavy wave. They thought it was a favorable wave that they could ride it, and suddenly they got dumped. So you got to know which waves to ride. You got to know which beaches are friendly, right? Which websites to go to and which to avoid because some of them are you know they're just these bad waves they just dump you you can't ride them and you've got to be so smart that by reading you know five words you can understand this is a bad wave just like a good surfer you know they know which waves to catch they leave some alone and they take some. So you have to be smart if you want to go surfing on the web. Then you have to... Who's a witness? The sun? The moon? What you can say? Okay, well I closed my... <laughs> I closed my shades because I can't read the computer with all the sun and the moon. So I did away with the sun and the moon. Who else is a witness? Yeah the air, and that would be hard to get rid of. <laughs> and you could go into an oxygen suit, you could wear, you know, one of those lungs, scuba equipment, but still there's air, I mean, you'd have to have air, but there's air as a witness, who else is a witness? Huh? Who? Super soul, very, you know, if you don't have a super soul, you don't have a soul. <laughs> super soul is a witness. So how can you say that this is looking over your shoulder saying, I see what you're doing <laughs> while you're, you know, enjoying reading this little blasphemous statement about, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so. I see you doing this. <laughs> we chant Hare Krishna every day. And like an elephant takes a bath, if we roll around in the sand afterwards, if we go surfing and you get dumped on the sand, what's the value of your chanting? Do you know how hard it is to get free of less of the statements that go in your mind? And you've got to do a lot of scrubbing. In the, in the field of public relations, they say that to counteract one bad thing, you have to do a hundred good things. In public relations, they say, if your company you know, has one bad mark against it, you got to get a hundred things. you got to do a hundred things to erase the memory of that one bad thing. So I'm saying, you know, be very, very careful. Be very careful. Very careful about your association. Now, I'm saying this because Carlos Prabhu told me that, you know, many people here surf there's a lot of surfers in this temple, he said. Remember what Prophet called surfers? Sufferers. <laughs> so don't be a sufferer. I mean, I don't know where you get all the free time anyway. I, I, I have a computer. I use a computer, but I don't have, I, don't even, I can't even read all my email. What to speak of 
getting on the websites and surfing, I don't have any free time. The prophet said, you should be so busy that by the time you lay your head down on the pillow, you're so exhausted, you just, you know, you don't have a free moment. Anybody have any questions? Well, that's nice of you. You let me off easy today. I think we should end with a cure time. That way the deities will be satisfied that they got something. And I will go while you're having cure time go to Marjorie's house and sip some ginger tea. I got a nice gift tonight, Marjorie, which I want to give you. Did you, you haven't seen it yet. You know what it is? You saw it already? How do you like it? You think there's a good wall for it? It's a beautiful, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, it's not a painting. But carving, carving. Carving. I really would like to take it with me, but it's so heavy. I'm, I'll, I'll give it to you on loan. <laughs> philanthropic, philanthropic, what is that? Philanthropic persons often loan their artwork. So I will give this painting on loan so that all of your visitors can enjoy it for a while. And if I ever figure out a way to, <coughs> I could probably take it. I have five people with me, but somehow it seems like a suitable piece of art for a New Zealand type of home like yours, you know. It really is nice. And we could always get that person to do another one, right? He's got a lot of time. <laughs> a lifetime, that's it. He's a prisoner, and the person who did it is a lifetime prisoner, so he's got a lifetime, he can do another one. I might just take it, we'll see. It is, I'm thinking about, maybe I'll put it in Cambridge somewhere. Because I'm not really thinking what to take there, so. It's, I'll take another look at it and make my final decision up there. So. But if I do take it, we'll have to make another one for your house. So let's have a good kirtan. Uh, who's a good kirtan leader here? Huh? No, Carlos is coming with me. Trivikram. Trivikram. Okay. Strike up the band. Now, tomorrow, we're going to have an initiation ceremony. Tomorrow morning. Who's getting the jug to get Come on, Carlos, you got to do a little more than that. Uh-oh. Where'd he go? Does anyone want to volunteer to get it together? Who's a capable person, Carlos? Well, One of your Christchurch people. Can you get it together? No. We want to get a fire jacket together, put a Mara for a new jacket. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually Dad read it for a because it's too quiet for a Well, it's going to get no muscle. Who else can do it? No one here knows how to get a fire jacket together. Can you, can you, can you, can you know how to get some bricks? Do you realize what Srila Prabhupada did? I mean, do you realize how pathetic this is when you say, no, I can't do it? Do you understand how pathetic anyone who says no after hearing this lecture? Srila Prabhupada came on a boat. He started the Krishna Prabhupada's movement. And someone's asking, can you get a fire yoga again? And you say, no. Go ahead, Klaus. What's that? Ask one of them after what I said. 
when I got initiated, I didn't even know what a Jaguar was, and prophets, I, I built a Jaguar. I mean, everyone watched so many videos. They're all so qualified. Just we get some bricks and sand. I'm pointing somewhere. Okay. No, Nicky, dude. Vivo! Just do your best. Do as best as you can, so it's all right. Dude. You know why there's a few colors missing in the dyes or something. As long as there's dry wood and some ghee. And a banana. And a banana. What else do you want? So we'll have that uh, at the time of the Srimad Bhagavatam. But first we'll do the Guru Puja to Srila Prabhupada. Greet the deities, Guru Puja, and then the fire sacrifice and lecture as part of the program. And uh, then there'll be lunch tomorrow again, about 1.30 or so. 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. We'll see, something like that. And then uh, 5.30. I mean, I'd like to say I'll do this program again at 5 the evening. I can say I was an hour late. Um, what are we planning to? I will tell you. I either I will do it. Yeah, I will say, okay, I will. There'll be a program at 5.30. Let's say 6. Let's say 6.30. If you talk provisionally, it's 5.30 and 6.30. No, I'm not going to talk that late. He'll be here earlier than that. Okay. 6 to 7, there'll be a lecture. By, by either myself, by Prabhu Vishnu or by Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu. One of us is going to give a lecture. <laughs> and you know, you'll just have to sit, show up and find out who that is. <laughs> I'll try my best to do it. Okay? So now, Trivikram, please lead the Kirtan. Hare Krishna. Yeah. 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 Yeah.